Good, hello class, uh, this is Mr. Comer, I'm welcoming you to my first podcast, and um, I thought I would take it easy today and kind of give you guys an introduction to genetics, specifically the patterns of inheritance. Um, I want you guys to uh, very slowly but surely begin to build your vocabulary base and your conceptual understanding so that as we move forward, um, we'll be in good shape uh, when we get back from break, all right? So the aim of today here is going to be how or where do organisms get their unique characteristics. And take a couple of seconds and you know maybe pause the video if you want and think of three types of variation that can exist in the organisms below. Did you do it? Did you pause? Did you think? All right, well let's hope you did or at least let's hope that you can recognize it if we take a look at, um, for instance, um, if we take a look at this group of people here, you can obviously see that there are many differences. People can be tall, they can be short, they can have light hair, dark hair, light skin, dark skin. Um, these plants, these pea plants, right, can have light flowers, purple flowers, white flowers. They can be tall, short, um, make different seeds, different types of seeds, different color seeds. Um, we'll be spending a lot of time looking at our model organism. Uh, the fruit fly, uh, they can have red eyes and white eyes and curly wings and straight legs, they could have little legs coming out of their feet. All right? So there's a lot of variation that exists, and we know that that variation is coming from sexual reproduction. Um, another word that the regents like to use for variation, they like to call it, um, excuse my handwriting here, biodiversity, which is just another way of saying um, genetic variation that exists. All right? So where does all this biodiversity come from? Well, in order to understand that, you need to know that, um, that we're going to be studying genetics. Genetics is essentially what we mean uh, as the science of heredity. And heredity is the study of how traits or characteristics are passed on from one parent to another. So if you look at a family, um, be it an animated family or a real family, um, you can see that there are certain similarities um, that get passed on from one generation to the next. Maybe you've been told that your combination of both your mom and your dad. And that leads a lot of people to think that heredity is actually a blending of traits and characteristics. But nothing can be further from the truth. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you why. Or let me ask you. Um, is heredity blending? You know, what happens when we blend two things together? We take, uh, you know, some blue paint over here and we mix it with some yellow paint. paint. Um, we get something um, that's essentially green, right? So we get something um, completely new, completely novel. In fact, we have a net loss of genetic variation. In this case, we start with two colors, um, and we end up with, with only one going on to the next generation. So heredity is not, is not blending. Um, in fact, the amount of genetic diversity um, that's created by a blending process is actually decreased. And you guys know that the amount of genetic variation um, from sexual reproduction um, actually increases. So Heredity is not a blending process. It's going to be much more complicated than that. And we're going to take it slow and talk about it in uh, its simplest forms. All right, so where does this variation come from? Um, well, of course, you should know by now that uh, this variation comes from our genes. All right, and that's a chromosome with some genes. And you should know that by now the two definitions of a gene, um, they're the functional unit of DNA, the DNA that, with the instructions that makes the protein, and it's also the unit of inheritance, um, factors that cause characteristics to be passed on from one generation to the next. So when we talk about genes, we're talking about the part of the DNA that codes for the protein that gives you your characteristics. Um, when we talk about genes, um, we have a couple of new words that we should um, be using. Uh, that first word is a locus. And when you think of locus, I don't know what just happened there. There we go. When you think of locus, um, I want you to think of location. Um, because that's the actual physical location of the gene on a particular chromosome. And at any given locus, um, there can be any number of alleles, right? Alleles are what we mean, are, uh, we mean by uh, the alternative forms of a gene. So here we go on this chromosome, two pairs of homologous pr chromosomes. Uh, maybe one you got from mom. Um, let's actually erase that. Maybe one you got from dad. And maybe one you got from mom. And at that locus is the gene for maybe hair color. And it's a little bit more complicated than that, but let's say there's one gene that determines hair color in the Simpsons universe. And of course, mom um, gives the gene for blue hair color. And maybe dad, even though he's bald, gave the gene for yellow hair color. And for whatever reason, for whatever uh, relationship between those two alleles, 
um, the blue hair uh, gene does not get expressed uh, in any of the Simpsons children, for, as far as I know. Uh, it seems that they all have um, yellow hair. So we'll be talking about how some of those relationships work, dominance, recessive, um, co-dominance, incomplete dominance, so on and so forth. Uh, as we move on. But just for now, uh, the take-home message is here is that the locus is where on the chromosome? It's almost like the address of the chromosome. And the allele is any of the different forms of that gene. So you can have the gene for blue hair color, yellow hair color, brown hair color, pink hair color, red hair color. Um, they all located at the same locus and their alternative forms um, are called alleles. Okay. Alright, moving on. Um, you guys should be very well aware of this idea by now that um, genes are going to uh, make our proteins and our proteins are going to do the stuff. So we said before, uh, if, you have, if you have a DNA at a particular, if you have a gene at a particular locus that um, codes for the protein for um, eye color, um, you're going to have that particular eye color. Um, but in genetics, or in, at least in Mendelian genetics, we, we don't use these terms all that much. I mean, we say genes and proteins and stuff, um, but we prefer to use this. We prefer to use the genotype, codes for a protein, which is understood, which gives us our phenotype, or our, our outward appearance. So your genotype is essentially what your DNA is. That's what your genes say. Please excuse me, I'll go back. Um, your genotype is what are, is in your DNA, the combination of the two alleles um, that you have at a particular locus. And your phenotype is your physical appearance, your outward appearance of the organism. It's essentially what the protein says to you. So if you have brown hair, your genotype is giving you instructions to make this protein, and that protein is giving you um, a physical appearance of the uh, brown hair. That's your phenotype. Hopefully that's clear, um, and hopefully if uh, that's unclear, be sure to take your notes and, uh, and go back. All right, what's next here? All right, so what determines your genotype? Who determines um, the genes that you get? Um, and I think you know that uh, based on our understanding of, of genetics by this point and, and reproduction. Of course, our parents, our parents do. And our parents are going to be giving us, um, giving us our genes that are going to determine, uh, determine our outcomes. So again, in this case, maybe uh, mom's egg had a little gene for blue hair and dad's sperm had a little gene for yellow hair and when it comes out and we get children um, it seems to me that they uh, they all have they all have yellow hair and again we'll just mention this um, traits or your phenotype is really determined by the relationship of these two genes so one gene can be dominant over the other and one gene can be recessive to the other and, and so on and so forth and that's when it what's going to determine um, the phenotype, okay? Uh, so that's about it. Um, by now we should have a pretty good understanding of a couple of our key words. Uh, let's just quickly write them down and you should have them in your Cornell notes. Uh, we learned the word um, allele. Uh, we learned the word locus. We learned the word genotype. We learned the word phenotype. I'm having a hard time fitting this. Maybe I'll shrink Homer down a little bit. Um, we learned the word heredity. Hereditary. All right. All of these words are going to be really important moving forward as we begin to um, discuss these things. So I'm dead on nine minutes now, and that's about where I wanted to end. Um, it's the first one of these, so I think that they can only get better. Um, I think this was a little bit boring. So I'm sorry, um, but I hope I uh, hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope we can uh, continue to do this uh, this flipped classroom model in the future. So um, I thank you very much for your attention. Hope you guys are enjoying your break, and I'll see you when we get back.